Welcome to episode negative 5 of Successful Demo. Each episode analyzes the third record and bracket aspects of one or more existing cards. Today, I'll be exploring a very niche two card combo in NBN. I never thought I'd see this day, but I will be presenting to you Ad Blitz and Rebranding Team. Yes, the Jankometer has shot through the roof. So, what are these cards? Let's explain them one by one. Ad Blitz is a very tricky card rules wise because there's so many rulings that even I am not sure of. So I went to Slack and asked um, some of the more experienced players and well I think this is the correct ruling but you can't exactly be sure until uh, Jaco Draco gives the official green light. I'm not going to trouble him over such a you know <laughs> barely played card though so I'll provide my interpretation of the ruling. Um, and if there are any corrections, you viewers can correct me in the comment section. First off, you have to pay two clicks. Uh, one must remember that Ad Blitz is a double. So yeah, it's not a very efficient card. It costs two clicks. It's very important to keep in mind on turns that you are trying to spam a bunch of advertisements out. The next thing you do is to select your value of X. Unlike some other cards where X is determined by a certain stat, such as with Psychographics, where X is the number of tags the runner has, for Ad Blitz, you get to choose the value of X yourself. This can be any value, as long as you can afford the X credits to pay for it. After you do that, you select X advertisements from uh, Archives and HQ. Note that it says Archives and or HQ, which means you can install from a combination of both places. Right? After you've selected your X advertisements, you will install and res the first advertisement, followed by the second advertisement, and so on. Uh, because AdBlitz stipulates that you must install and res if able, this implies that if you can afford the reses, if you have enough money to res each uh, advertisement, you must do so. If you cannot afford to pay the combined install and res cost of all your AdBlitz cards, then your entire install and res action doesn't take place at all. You do not partially res some of your assets and leave others unres. That doesn't happen. Just as with false lead, which uses the if able clause, um, if you only have one click left and someone forces you to lose two clicks if able, you can't lose two clicks, so nothing happens. Right? So with that said, I think a natural follow-up question is, what advertisements are there in the card pool that AdBlitz can res uh, for you? Uh, this is a good time to test your knowledge of the card pool. Think of as many advertisements in the card pool as you can. Write them down on a piece of paper or something. I'll review the answers shortly. Pause the video if you need more time. I'm gonna review in three, two, one. Here you go. Not that many, surprisingly. Most of these came from uh, the Data and Destiny um, big box, except that not really, actually. Uh, if you look, um, product placement came the cycle before, I think. It's a Sand Sand cycle. Data and Destiny only gave us special offer and launch campaign. Actually, a lot of the um, advertisements were spread all across the cycles. You have very early ones from the core, original core site, like Adonis campaign, uh, and pad campaign and you also have pop-up window which appear in the first cycle so not that many advertisement pr advertisements printed over the course of the game's lifespan actually and quite a few like eve campaign and rex campaign actually rotated out so all in all we only have eight advertisements of which two are hb three four are mbn and two are neutral so really not that much um at blitz fodder um yeah, uh, it's, I mean, it is something, like, that's a fair few advertisements you have there, but only one upgrade. It's not, the variety isn't there, that's what I'm trying to say. You're not going to play all the campaigns in the same deck. So that leads me to the other combo card. Uh, but before that, uh, yeah, uh, if you look at recent competitive decks, the only uh, assets that you, or rather advertisements that you really see, uh, out there nowadays are pop-up window and Marilyn campaign as well as pack campaign. These are the only cards that I really consider to be um, half decent and viable, worth playing in the deck. I think if you are going to construct a deck with Ad Blitz and uh, you know Ad Blitz itself is a pretty bad card. <laughs> if you're going to play another bad advertisement alongside it, two bad cards played together doesn't make a good combo. So yeah, um, you know instead of playing 
bad cards like all these uh, advertisements that are not uh, boarded up let's play something else let's play a good agenda let's play rebranding team the best 4-2 NBN agenda in the game <laughs> no, 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 who am I kidding? I am playing two bad cards in the same deck at Blitz and Rebranding Team, come on. Oh man, this is this is going to be <laughs> jank as hell. But hey, uh, I can justify this because I selected both cards for the successful demo. So, you know, <laughs> uh, we'll just roll with it. Rebranding Team is the worst. It literally is the worst. It's useless by itself in that if you score the Rebranding Team and do not draw your ad Blitzes, it's useless. If you... Draw your ad blitz only and don't score a rebranding team, it's pretty bad as well. But what if you have both? Now that is where things get interesting. Because if you ever play an ad blitz with rebranding team out, suddenly you get to recur all the good stuff assets, all the tier 1 assets. If you're thinking of NBN decks with assets, you're looking at controlling the message, uh, those top tier CTM decks. And yeah, there are some really powerful assets in there that you can recur with rebranding team. Can you imagine reviving your daily business shows and bankers groups? Holy cow, bankers groups coming back for free. Um, or not so much free, but you know, you get to recur them with ad blitz and rebranding team. That's amazing. Not to mention stuffing a Rashida Jahim in your scoring remote while doing so. Ah, now we're talking, now we're talking, you know. I don't really like playing janky combos, but if you're telling me that you can recur good cards with this janky combo, well, I'm all ears. So that's what we're going to do. This is going to be our deck. It looks like a regular CTM deck for the most part, but then we've purposely stuffed the Ad Blitz rebranding team combo into it. The remainder of the deck is pretty standard fare. Uh, because we are running such a surplus of economy, you realize that this deck has a lot more economy, a lot more draw than the usual CTM deck. We will be rich richer than the runner, no questions asked. And because of that, we will be able to use uh, some combos very well. This is why our deck mostly revolves around the 14 operations we have. There are so many tricks uh, that you can execute uh, with the operations. Let me highlight some of the few. In the early game, obviously, um, as with any regular CTM deck, the main power comes from using a strong early asset like Rashida or CBG, Bankers Group. And, you know, threatening the folk. If they trash it, they will get hard-hitting news. If they don't trash it, you get a superior economy lead. Uh, towards the mid to late game, uh, other things you can pull off are uh, sea source into exchange rebranding. Because we are only running two copies of rebranding and the runner might be so aggressive as to steal them, you can easily uh, and reliably get your rebranding team back by simply sea sourcing and exchanging for it. This is a powerful way to ensure that you are going to get the rebranding team in your score area regardless of your matchup. And that's quite important, right? Because we want to showcase ad blitz. So this is what actually uh let me to construct this deck because uh knowing that i can get rebranding team on my side uh rel fairly reliably in most games is very important because uh once you do that and once you play an ad blitz to reassert your economy lead uh by spamming lots of money assets uh you will become rich and you'll be able to close out the game with another nasty combo yeah the typical uh tag six tag combo from sync imported into ctm you see source them they can't beat the trace they lose all their money from close accounts and then you saddle them with four additional tags from hard hitting news because they now can't beat the hard hitting news trace either and when they're saddled with tags you just uh launch the cycle graphics to end the game so that's the general outline of this deck make big buck and score out or, you know, just punish the runner in every conceivable way with your tag punishment and tag lengthening cards. All with the support of Ad Blitz. Um, if there's one deck that can make Ad Blitz work, I guess it's this. But there's only one real way to find out, and that's to hit JNet. And <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> Welcome to this matchup with 419. Now, our opening hand has four freaking assets, so we are very, very, very happy. Um, 419 is a tricky matchup for two reasons. Firstly, they have a link, uh, rendering CTM's trace a bit less effective than usual. But more importantly, their exposability allows them to run less, right? Usually, uh, runners have to constantly run to check your remotes because uh, Rashida's and Banker's groups are must-trashes. Must but in the case of 419, uh, if they 
every time they expose one of your assets, that's one less asset they need to physically check. Ways of click checking because yeah, um, you know if they know that's not Rashida or Bankers, they don't need to run it. So my opponent has a very good opening turn where they drop employee strike and check all my remotes. Uh, again, they don't need to check server one. They know that's uh, not a high uh, uh, asset of high importance. So they check the other two, trashing my Rashida and leaving me with just DBS and Maryland campaign. Um, all right, not much can do about that. But I do draw into a hedge fund, which is really nice. It'll help uh, my early economy. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to prevent the exposure of cards because I'm not rich enough to pay into the one credit. I'll definitely consider it once Omakua starts hitting the table. But for now, we'll just have to play a very honest game and allow our opponent to, you know, not, con you know, ignore our asset game, essentially. Uh, the employee strike is also very annoying and that's something that we should look to get rid of as soon as possible. Now, thankfully, um... The, the fact that we started with lots of early assets means that we don't actually have to ice HQ just yet. If they go in for a diversion of funds here, they're not going to earn a lot of money because we can simply res our assets uh, in response, uh, thereby you know offshoring our money onto our assets. So diversion of funds will be less effective. Uh, you can divert fewer funds if the corp has fewer credits to begin with. Now our opponent here steals a rebranding team, which is super annoying, but it's kind of to be expected given that um, you know, there are no agendas in our hand, they must all be in R&D. Now, this is usually a good time to land a hard-hitting news, but they are above 8 credits, so they can definitely clear all the tags uh, on their turn, and plus they have extra money on bankroll anyway. So, landing a hard-hitting news here, not the best idea. We'll wait for our asset economy to tick up before doing so. We're still too poor to prevent exposure, so now our opponent knows that there's a toll booth on HQ. Uh, I was forced to put the toll booth there, even though optimally it's placed on the remote, simply because now I'm in diversion of funds range, we cannot allow ourselves to get siphoned out. So our opponent makes a big mistake here, uh, they make a run on R&D to, uh, to check uh, for agendas, but then after that, they p spend 4 credits to play an Earthrise Hotel. This gives them, this puts them down at 5 credits, making them a very easy, hard-hitting news target. Um, Sure, they can pop the bank roll before I play the hard hitting news, but the thing is, I don't think they've actually seen the hard hitting news off my deck yet. I think I drew that with a click. So I'm gonna spend some time here to waffle around, uh, pause, and give my opponent an action window to see if they want to pop their bank roll. Um, after a bit of waiting, uh, I saw that they weren't gonna act, so I landed the hard hitting news. I paid one extra credit uh, than was necessary. Uh, this was a mistake. This should have been a Trace 7 by Trace 8 instead. Um, no big deal, we'll just carry on the game as such. So now our opponent is saddled with tanks and the only way they can get rid of it is to actually pop the bankroll. So I'm very happy that landing the hard hit news means that uh, their pseudo desperado is out of the way, they are no longer gaining money from running R&D. So that's really really good. Uh, unfortunately we're actually not drawing to agendas so we can't actually start scoring out just yet. We'll have to play a bit slowly, which is completely fine. Our Mar we have three credits a turn from Maryland and Pack Campaign, almost like a banker's group, essentially, uh, with, with a much higher trash cost. Uh, our opponent is forced to click for credits here. This gives us a lot of breathing room to uh, start doing stuff. Now, first, I make the mistake here of burying, burying the quantum predictive model. I call this a mistake because I should have attempted to score it here. This would have given me two things. It would have given me... Uh, exchange of information folder and it will also have gotten rid of employee strike. So those are two very important things, um, turning on my asset game and turning on EOI. So yeah, I forfeited the QPM in favor of uh, the daily business show because those two were the cards that appeared on my mandatory draw with daily business show. I had to keep one to keep and the other to bury in, at the bottom of my deck. I chose the second daily business show for extra card filtering, which was kind of redundant to be honest. So I consider that a play mistake. As you'll soon see in subsequent turns, there are lots of turns where uh, I draw three cards with daily business show. I want to keep two of them, but I'm forced to bury one of them due to the double daily business ability. Here's a perfect example of it. I daily business show, double daily business show into C source close accounts, the ultimate combo that I want to see. But I can't keep both cards. I can only choose one to keep. This is so annoying. So yeah, very unhappy about that. Me no happy. Uh, I chose to keep the sea source obviously because I have lots of tag punishment in my hand but no tagging cards. Uh, no, no. 
You stupid! I, oh man, why did I throw away my... Oh, I'm so dumb. Okay, so here I finally decided that I needed to keep the QPM. I kept the wrong QPM. I should have kept the first QPM I saw. Now I'm keep, keeping the second QPM and giving up my Seasource close accounts is a huge, huge, huge mistake. Uh, yeah, so me playing very badly there, but we ignore that. It's our first time with the deck. Cut me some slack. Our opponent finally, finally finds the turtle. So now I have to be really careful with my... Um, 419 exposed triggers. Uh, here we obviously keep the Rashida and we score the QPM. Uh, we didn't install any cards this turn so we don't have to worry about 419. More importantly, uh, this gets rid of E-Strike and turns on exchange of information if I find my second copy of Sea Source. I know one's at the bottom of my deck, there's another one floating around R&D somewhere. Right, our opponent's still setting up, they're not very rich at all, they spend a lot of money installing their Omakua, the Dean Lister, so they're pretty poor. This is a very good time to start spamming out Rashidas and Bankers groups to give, to give us an insurmountable credit lead, and it is at this point where we can actually start affording to pay into 419's ability. Uh, the pack campaign and Marilyn's have all paid off really well, so... Uh, yeah, because of that, I'm able to actually afford the 419, paying into 419. I don't want my opponent to know that I have a banker's lying naked on the table. So, sure enough, my opponent doesn't check it, they're too poor to run, so this is where we can fire both Rashida and Banker's group in one fell swoop. This is gonna feel really good here, drawing 5 cards with Rashida, burying 2, and then mandatorily drawing another one. Alright, we draw 15 minutes, Marilyn, a second copy of Ad Blitz, which we don't really need, Sea Source, and Data Raven. Now, the first Data Raven is always very crucial because it turns on QPM scoring for the rest of the game. Uh, and then I just kept the Seasource because obviously I'm looking to Seasource exchange into the rebranding team at some point. Uh, I know I have one Ad Blitz in my hand, so once I execute the Seasource exchange, uh, Ad Blitz is open, I can start Ad Blitzing for all the good stuff in my archives. This is starting to come out, you know, uh, come together really nicely. Alright. Um, now I'm just debating where to put the data raven. Uh, typically you put it on R&D, that protects R &D, uh, data, uh, quantum predictive models in R&D, but I chose to put it on server 6 instead to really deter this 419 deck from uh, running over my remote. Uh, Omakua is really scary, Omakua with Dean Lister, doubly so. So uh, I don't want them getting in there. Dirty Laundry into Bankers Group. Uh, oh yeah, they played Strike first before Dirty Laundry into Bankers Group. So that Second strike is out now, and we should try to score an agenda soon to get rid of the strike. Um, it would be very suboptimal to play at Blitz during uh, employee strike because they can simply run all the exposed assets and trash them without taking the CTM trace. So just keep that in mind. Um, all right. Over to our turn, we are going to raise all our money assets, and we draw Exchange, Raven, and Rashida. Rashida seems like the optimal card to keep here. Even though we are getting flooded with cards, there's still no agendas. I'm really hoping to top deck a uh, Bill here, but you know, uh, no cigar here. So, given that my opponent ran the last turn, I'm strongly considering the Sea Source Exchange combo. Uh, yeah, they did run last turn after all to trash my bankers group, and if there's one time I can capitalize, this would definitely be it. Uh, they're pretty poor. I mean, they're not poor, but they are only gonna get richer from here on out, so it feels like this is the time to see source exchange and then play the Rashida in the remote so that I can replenish my entire hand with more cards next turn. I'm just calculating at this point how far back would I... Uh, how far a setback it would be if I land the sea source here. Because they have 9 credits and a link, I need a base trace of 11. So the sea source would actually cost me um, 10 credits. Right? It will cost me 10 credits to land the sea source exchange combo, putting me down to 5 credits just for one agenda point swap and for the ability for my bankers groups and my Rashidas to become advertisements. Is it worth it? Tough to say. Uh, it is really, really tough to say. This is a very marginal call here. It, at this point, I felt like I wasn't winning on agendas. It's not like I'm threatening match point here. So it feels like I am kind of forced to play the sea source exchange here, because I'm clutching at straws at this, yeah, at this time. My opponent is kind of set up by this point, and I'm not really set up at all. So yeah, it's not really looking very good for me. By this point, I should have scored a couple more agendas. Uh, it's just that I haven't really been drawing into agendas, and yeah, um, yeah, 
and I've got I've gotten all my DBS triggers wrong, as I mentioned. Uh, CSOS into close accounts will have been very strong uh, if I have it right now. It will be a no-brainer CSOS close accounts exchange uh, if I actually had a, C a close accounts in my hand. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Speaker of the devil! The closed accounts arrive. My second copy of CSOS and close accounts turned up right on time. So. So. We are going to make some magic happen. But first, I'm going to bait my opponent into running server 6 uh, by overwriting my Marilyn with Rashida. Unfortunately, they expose it with falsified credentials. Thankfully, they name agenda, so they're not getting 4 credits off it. But, uh, yeah, now they know they don't have to run server 6. So, they expose my Rashida, they drop Earthrise, they did not make a run, so uh, I can't see source them. So it's time to induce the sea source by scoring an agenda. Alright. I'm gonna bury a bunch of cards, and I see rebranding team and global food. So I'm gonna try to score the rebranding team here. Either they run it and trigger C source so I can C source into exchange into close accounts, or they don't run it and I score the rebranding team. Either way, I will have a rebranding team in my score area, and yeah, that will allow me to play at blitz. So that is gonna be the objective going into the subsequent few turns. Alright, now it's time to hand the baton over to my opponent and see what they make of this situation. At 22 credits to my opponent's 10 credits, I'm really not worried about being able to land the Seesaw's close accounts combo. That is definitely going to be mine. The question is, are they going to attempt to contest this agenda? Uh, they falsify my remote so they see the rebranding team. And it's up to them if they want to run the remote. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to make a tough decision here on what ice to reds. Currently, the remote is Raven into Enigma into Toll Booth. All of them can be easily broken by Omakua at 4 strength. Uh, but the inside job basically uh, you know, made my decision obvious. Uh, if they didn't inside job, I would have a tough time deciding between resing Raven and resing Toll Booth. But given the inside job, it's just not worth it for me to res ice here. Because... If I rest ice, it's going to cost me way more money than it costs them to break said ice. And that means that I won't have enough money to sea source them. So that was a no-brainer there. I'm going to make another huge mistake here on my DBS triggers. It seems like this is a recurring team. I'm going to bury the 15 minutes as, as opposed to the global food. 15 minutes is one of my strongest agendas, a very good uh, exchange fodder. Uh, I really should have kept it instead of the global food. So I'm going to close their accounts here and exchange for the rebranding team. Sadly, I can't follow it up with a hard-hitting news. Selling them with 5 tags would be amazing, but we'll have to make do with this for now. Alright, so I, I'm still losing 2 agenda points to 3, but more importantly, I have money, my opponent doesn't, and my app blitz is ready to go. Because they were forced to spend this entire turn clicking for credits and clearing the tag, I now have a huge app blitz window. This is an interesting term I'm coining up. The problem with Ad Blitz is, sure, I'm going to bring out all my bankers groups at the same time. But with Employee Strike Out, my opponent can very easily trash all my bankers groups and all my Rashidas because they're not protected by ICE. However, because they're stuck on one credit, because they had to spend the entire of last turn recovering from the close accounts, I'm able to happily install the bankers groups here. Even with Strike Out, they cannot muster up the 4 credits to trash both bankers groups. So I'm guaranteed getting a lot of money next turn for sure. Right? I'm slowly going to add Blitz here. I name 5 for X equals 5. So I'm going to install 5 cards. Bankers, Bankers, Rashida, Rashida. Uh, I'm forced to res the second copy of Rashida here. And that is not possible uh, without trashing the first copy because Rashida is unique. So this was a gameplay error. Uh, what I should have do, did was to name x equals to 4 and only install one Rashida instead. Remember uh, from the rules I mentioned I have to install and res them if able. And I was definitely able to. So I should have installed only one Rashida as opposed to two. And I guess that highlights also one limitation of app blitz. You cannot get multiple Rashidas out. Um, yeah, some of you might ask, why do you want multiple Rashidas anyway? Um, it's not like flooding your hands a good idea. Well, I could fire both Rashidas on different turns, right? So I'll get 6 credits and 3 cards this turn, 3 cards next turn. You know, that's pretty good. So that was my intention, but that went alright because, yeah, I can't have 2 Rashidas out at the same time. Rest. 
Now, my opponent makes a crazy big play. I think this is when, yeah, this is the game-changing play. They embezzle me and I lose my second copy of Seasaws and my second copy of Closed Accounts. So those cards are no longer accessible to me. I do not have any more, uh, yeah, those cards anymore. That was absolutely huge. Oh, um, I really, really wish they hit the global food instead of either of those cards. That was terrible because this gives them a huge burst of credits with which to trash my bankers. Um, you know, it would be a really good idea here to trash both bankers. Uh, but it also negates any future sea source into exchange combos that I might have. So my opponent, instead of running my assets, uh, decides to make the fatal error of running R&D because there's an IP block there and they're running Omakua. So that's going to cost them a tag that they have to rid themselves of. Right, so they're going to see a card from R&D, trash the third banker's groups. Uh, and then, because they embezzled my second copy of closed accounts, they figured that I can't possibly be running three closed accounts. I have already played one, the other one was embezzled. I'm going to float the tag, my opponent says. I'm not worried about closed accounts. I'm going to play Shua Gamble instead. Because uh, their reasoning here is if I clear the tag, I can't then play Shua Gamble. I'll be below five credits. So that's very smart from my opponent. Uh, making a very educated guess about what I have in my deck and what I don't. Obviously, I don't have a third copy of closed accounts, so I can't punish my opponent's move. Nor can I punish the fact that they are tagged because, you know, there's nothing to exchange and they have no resources that I can trash. So the game just goes on as normal. Um, I have a lot of asset uh, agendas here that I don't really want to jam into the remote. I'm not quite rich enough to rest the ice on the remote and they have a 5 strength Omakua. Mm, pretty iffy situation to be in. Still, I'm going to jam the project view here, uh, but first I'm going to install the Marilyn that will soak up the 419 uh, trigger. At this point, I don't really care about Omakua's virus counters anymore. That, you know, that is, as long as it's 5 strength or more, there's no way I'm uh, beating uh, the Omakua. Uh, the main thing here is to make sure that my view goes in the remote undetected. Uh, yeah, make them have to guess what's in my remote. But for my opponent, you know, the guessing games are completely taken out of the equation. All they have to do is to spearfish HQ. Inside job R&D. Run my archives as normal. You know what's coming. It's a 419 deck. I really should have seen this coming and put more ice on centrals. Well, okay, <laughs> um, so my build's in the bin. Uh, that's the game winning build in the bin. Yes, yes. Uh, they also stole a global food from my bin that I threw away earlier. I've basically lost this game. Uh, it's not that I wasn't aware of Apocalypse 419. That is obviously a thing and I've heard of it. But, you know, I've played so f so few games of Netrunner recently that, you know, I just haven't faced against a proper Apocalypse 419 deck. So yeah, wasn't playing around there at all. This is the beginning of the end. At this point, I'm just, you know, trying to clutch at straws again, this time more so than ever. Doesn't really matter what I do now. All my opponent needs to do is to run archives to win. Um, the fact that they are poor is of little consolation because I'm out of tag punishment cards as well. I discarded psychographics earlier. The only tag punishment remaining is the one exchange in my hand, which isn't going to win me the game anyway. So I'm just going to attempt to score global food the hard way here. <laughs> this is never something you really want to do. But given that I no longer have card filtering because DBS is gone, you know, this is the best I can do. Uh, yeah, so my opponent just continues setting up here. They want to win the safe way. They want to, yeah, play such that the win is 100% guaranteed. So yeah, playing around my hard hitting news, letting me score this agenda that they know won't be of consequence. It's only going to put me at match point. I can't win off this. And then they're going to go strike. They're going to strike at me with... Uh, here it comes. It's coming. Sneak Door Beta. Yeah. Sneak Door Beta, a pretty good card to activate um, Apocalypse by allowing you a, an alternative route into HQ. Um, I knew that this game was going to end eventually because they would eventually sneak door and steal my global food that I can't really do anything about. Um, so I'm going to attempt to win by scoring 7 agenda points Oh, come on, I, I should have installed the... Yeah, yeah. I kind of figured that my opponent would run server 15 here, so instead of jamming a build and trying to win next turn, I played the Marilyn instead, hoping that I could bait them into running the remote. 
Turns out it didn't really matter at the end of the day because they actually did have a second copy of Apocalypse in hand. So once again, they had a very safe line of play of running three centrals and landing the Apocalypse here. Of course, the game ended before they could land the second Apocalypse because they stole the winning global fruit from my hand. So even though we arguably got hard countered by an Apocalypse deck, you never want to see that card when you are spamming a bunch of assets with Ad Blitz, but we still managed to pull off the Ad Blitz into rebranding team combos, or rather rebranding team to Ad Blitz combos. So I guess it was a successful demo after all. At the very least, we can analyze what happened with that one Ad Blitz, which netted us an okay number of four assets. Um, you know, in getting four installs in the span of two clicks is okay. Problem is, it cost us six credits, uh, including the rest cost of uh, the bankers group, of course. That's not really good. Um, because it actually brought us down to a pretty low credit level. And on that turn, they were able to abuse that by embezzling into HQ. Remember the embezzle that uh, struck away our key combo pieces? That would uh, have been a lot harder to do had I been able to rest the toll move on HQ. So yeah, uh, that gave my opponent a huge running window. This is an important thing to note when you play Ad Blitz. You are leaving yourself at the mercy of the runner for one turn. Um, the other thing to point out is that for this combo to actually have been pulled off, I needed to actually exchange for the rebranding team because I wasn't able to score one of my own. So the Seasource into Exchange combo was expensive and if you compare it with other NBN decks, it simply is a suboptimal swap. Uh, because there's so many better agendas that you can use exchange for. Most notably, three pointers like Global Food Initiative will help you much more in winning the game than rebranding team does. Sure, it gave me a bunch of assets, but towards the end, I really couldn't do much with them. Even without the apocalypse, I think it would have been nearly impossible for me to come back anyway, because the money and cards, extra cards were irrelevant. Uh, from Rashida, from Bankers Group and Rashida respectively. I wasn't able to leverage on those because all my tag punishment went in the bin. That embezzle was huge. At the end of the day, this is a very clunky combo for an effect that is only suboptimal because there is a card out there that does the exact same thing or rather something close to what Ad Blitz and Rebranding Team does, but better. Yep, it's in... Um, you know, those top tier competitive CTM decks already. It's a good effect, but um, yeah, the better card, you, why play this suboptimal combo when the better card is available in team sponsorship? I mean, it does the same thing, right? It installs your Rashidas and Bankers from the bin, but it's way better. It, it, you know, you don't need to spend two clicks doing it, and uh, it's very difficult to trash. It's an asset itself, and it uh, doesn't require so many moving parts. Uh, what more can I say? All I can do is to leave you with this sponsored message from Shift Division. Psst. Hey you, look at the lady over there. See her suit of armor? You know where that came from? That's right, Shift Division manufactures not just sportswear, but also high quality, durable, long lasting armor fit for wear no matter where you go. No hidden costs, no extra payment. Unlike all those unscrupulous NBN advertisements with their hidden costs and fine print. At Shift Division, what you see is what you get. You score the agendas, we make the clothing. Satisfaction guaranteed. Only at Shift, a subsidiary of Haas Barroy. Right, with the paid message out of the way, let's head into the final section, combos and normals. Starting with rebranding team, another way to ensure that rebranding team's effect uh, comes online, besides using exchange of information, is to use Media Blitz. Well, both cards were printed in Data and Destiny for a reason. Uh, the big combo here is to play uh, after the runner steals a rebranding team, you play within the span of your single turn, media blitz plus ad blitz. So that will ensure that you um, get your big ad blitz off and you don't have to worry about counter currents because you are playing the ad blitz before the runner has a window to use a click to overwrite your current. Uh, the only problem is it's going to be really expensive. As I mentioned, ad blitz is expensive enough as is. 
Media Blitz doesn't really help in that regard, and it's also fairly blank otherwise. A huge deck building challenge would be uh, to make Media Blitz more useful than simply uh, something that turns on App Blitz and that requires a rebranding team in the runner score area. <clears throat> a combo for App Blitz is Total Bags. This is actually a really good combo that I didn't think of until uh, I visited Slack and talked about this card. Uh, Total Bags is wonderful because it's a great way to offset the X cost of Ad Blitz. Uh, of course, Ad Blitz costs one credit for every asset you install, but um, th this is assuming you are installing only assets with Ad Blitz. But Total Bags completely negates it by get paying you one credit per new asset you install. So that's really wonderful. But what really truly makes this shine is the fact that Total Bags doesn't have to be installed. Even if your opponent is uh, very proactive with trashing your Total Bags, all you simply need to do is to play Ad Blitz uh, and name Total Bags as the first card you install in Res. That puts Total Bags online immediately and allows you to install your subsequent cards uh, with the effect of Total Bags. Um, because the resing of Turtle Bags doesn't happen during a paid ability window, it happens as part of Ad Blitz's card effect. So this is why you are able to res Turtle Bags before resolving the remainder of Ad Blitz. This is a bit rules iffy. I'm not sure if the rules intend for it to be this way. Um, I could see the ruling be that all cards have to be installed simultaneously and then uh, installed first and then all cards have to be installed first and then all cards have to be res next. Um, that might be the case, I don't know for sure. Again, ruling, rulings are very hazy over Ad Blitz simply, simply because it's not a commonly seen card. So again, I would urge you to do your own research or check out the comment section where I may or may not clarify this interaction. Yep, sorry about that, this is really the best I can provide because, you know, rules are a bit shaky here and there. Uh, but with Nisei, the, uh, yeah, the Nisei project taking over uh, Netrunner and with a dedicated rules team and a rules lead, uh, these will hopefully be ironed out in the future. The best part about Turtle Bags, going back to that, is of course it only costs one influence, so importing it into CTM is not a big problem. Now, throughout this entire video, we've been talking about advertisements, rebranding, and we've skirted around and completely ignored the one card that you would expect to see in an Ad Blitz rebranding team deck, which is obviously, as, you're, as, as it's probably on your mind right now, Spark Agency. I'm about to go on a, uh, what do you call it? Um, yeah, a defamation spree on uh, Spark Agency here because I think this is a very big non-bow with Ad Blitz. The biggest problem with playing Ad Blitz in Spark Agency, even though they were obviously designed to be used together, again being from the same big box, is that. Ad Blitz forces you to res all the adverts. This is a very big problem because Spark Agency triggers only once per turn at most. So you are in effect wasting all your advert resing triggers because only the first advert you install gets the Spark Agency trigger. All subsequent ones do not cause the runner to lose a credit. So you are losing a lot of mileage that way. Even though Ad Blitz installs and reses advertisements, which does trigger Spark Agency, does its kind of a combo, but it's not making the full use of Ad Blitz, unfortunately, you, as you are not able to spread the advert reses among, across multiple turns. Now there is an exception to this. It is possible to circumvent this downside by adding in a third combo card in the form of Divert Power. This was brought up to me by, of course, the <laughs> Jank Master from Eldershot, Alex Borrow. So this was a very, very good idea. Thanks, Alex, for the shout out. This is how you circumvent the downside. By de your adverts immediately after ad blitzing, blitzing them, you now have the ability to re-res re them at your own volition. They maintain the advertisement subtype because rebranding team. So. Uh, that way, you can start taxing your opponent on credits every single turn. Of course, this is a combo with a hell lot of moving parts, but if you do manage to pull it off, I think it'll be pretty glorious. So that's for you to explore. We won't cover this combo. Now, the problem with Spark Agency and Rebranding Team, on the other hand, is that it is simply outclassed. Let's look at it this way. If you score a Rebranding Team in Spark Agency, all future assets that are not already advertisements will make the runner lose one credit. Okay, that's not too bad. And then you look at the best NBN deck there is, which is CTM, 
and their combo is just better because they play basically the same thing except with a different ID with a different agenda in AR enhanced security. Instead of making the runner lose a credit, now the runner loses two credits and a click, the cost of clearing a tag. This is just way better. So uh, because of this, um, if you're looking to play a credit denial deck, CTM and AR enhanced security is way better than Spark um, and you know rebranding team. Uh, it might have been good back in the time where uh, NBN had other tools uh, aside from tag punishment, but now that NBN basically revolves all around tag and tag punishment, um, you know, CTM really is the go-to deck and this is why you no longer see any Spark decks and rebranding teams flying around. As if you saw them anytime uh, before that, well, now you certainly won't because CTM and AR Enhanced Security is just flat out better. Right, that's all the time we have for today. Hope you enjoyed this very janky, <laughs> yeah, uh, this janky video that just completely exploded the jankometer. I don't usually do these, but decided to do, to do it on a whim, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thanks for watching, and happy net running. See ya.